All right, thanks, Jim. On Friday, President Obama announced a real shift in policy on contraceptive coverage. Religiously affiliated organizations like hospitals and universities will not have to include free birth control in their health plans, and instead, women can get the drugs directly from insurance companies free of charge. Joining us now is Professor Barbara McGraw. She runs the Center for Engaged Religious Pluralism at St. Mary's College. Thanks for being with us today. Boy, this has been uh, quite a debate. We just saw the piece and how it's affecting people's lives. How do you think this is going to play out for Obama? Well, I think that it's uh, the, the hyperbole in the conversation right now, I don't think it's been very helpful to the debate. This is a really important debate for us to be having in this country what right is, now. What is the debate? Because it, it, it gets, everything just got thrown in there so fast. Is yeah. anybody paying attention? As you turn on the radio one morning, you're hearing something about contraceptive. The church says no, and they say, wait a minute, it's the church says no, but it's about their hospitals. Those are private enterprises that they operate, and it got, and then it was resolved. Then it changed within 48 hours. So a lot of people don't even know what this is about. Right? Like, is, it, is it access to health care, or is this freedom of religion? Uh, it's both. It's a, what's, what we have here is really two competing interests, and that's what's been missing in the debate. There's a gender equity issue, which is really a civil rights issue. If organizations are going to provide prescription drug benefits, then yeah. they also should be providing birth control as a pres prescription drug benefit. It's a gender equity issue. That's one side of the issue. The other competing interest is religious liberty, religious conscience. And both sides are very important. And so what the Obama administration is trying to do is trying to find the solution that is the balance between these two important interests. And it originally suggested one solution, that wasn't acceptable to uh, Catholic-affiliated organizations like churches, hospitals, charities, um, and uh, colleges and universities. Uh, and now they've tried another one. Yeah, they, on this, this might be a naive question, mm -hmm. but this was on whether medical health care plans by hospitals and universities run by the Catholic Church should include this benefit, correct? Correct. Is there a concern or is it uh, that this would be the first step? and that the next administration order would be okay, now you have to say to start providing abortions as well. I don't think that that's the issue because I don't think or that... Is there a fear that that would be? I, I do that think there that there is... a separation mm -hmm. that you would be telling Catholic organizations, if you run hospitals, you have to do this, this, and that. Well, I do think there is the slippery slope argument that is going on right now. And what we need to do is it's always a balancing act. So what the law says is that when there is an important government interest, for example, in women's health and uh, equity, what they have to do is find what is the least restrictive uh, way of solving the problem for religious liberty. So religious liberty needs to be respected, but what is concerning is that the, that the church is asking for an absolute, or not, not everyone in the church, but many people are saying there should be an absolute religious conscience objection when there's a law that infringes in some way on religious rights. And the law really doesn't go that far. But the Catholic Church and those political allies on their side have been able to push the issue politically much further than really the law requires. And you know what the irony is? Is that the Supreme Court decision more than 20 years ago that said there should be no exemptions for religious reasons when there are general laws that are valid like this, was written by a conservative Catholic justice, Anton Scalia. But if we followed it, because it's not just a Catholic, I hear Jewish organizations saying, okay, if San Francisco had passed its law banning circumcisions, then they would have to ban circumcisions in their own religious hospitals. Well, here's what makes it kind of uh, it's difficult. It's, it's when there is a law that is requiring something of, of religion or is in some way infringing on religion that you have to find this balance. But what the law isn't doing is talking about religious organizations themselves. So we're talking about affiliated organizations. So churches and synagogues were always exempt right. entirely. It's really these organizations that are doing these other things. But here's what the problem is. The Obama administration originally tried to define the issue as between what are your really religious 
you know, you're in the pew kinds of organizations versus doing health care or charity or whatever. But it's an important mission of the Catholic Church to do charity, to do those kinds of things. And so we're always trying to find this balancing act. And you're absolutely right. There is a slippery slope argument, but it is about the balance. How are we going to balance the important interest that the public has in health care and women's equity with religious liberty? But the law doesn't say it's a total ban. It never has. There are federal statutes and um, state statutes that do provide exemptions, but only in certain circumstances. Now, I just, we're almost out of time, but I just have to ask you, you're with St. Mary's College. Right. Uh, what is what is the college's stance on this? Well, the college is uh, taking a, a position. I'm not speaking for the college here. I'm on my own. But uh, they are taking a position on the issue. Our president has uh, signed a letter with uh, the bishops and is arguing the point as well. But... Um, that's why we're here. Okay, that's why we're here. All right. Very Bottom good. We appreciate you being here and having the discussion. And putting on the hot seat at the end. Yeah, of the really? <laughs> you gotta. You gotta. We'll be right back.